hello everybody it's wednesday and i am so excited that you are here and if you're watching the replay hello if you're a secret squirrel hello i see sandy and michelle hi gail hi regina regina are you new or maybe just fairly new and i don't have your name in my memory bank yet hi andrea good evening to you hope everybody is doing wonderfully well i am excited today because I'm coming in towards the, uh, the, the end zone with this current project. Let's see. Let's switch my cameras around. There we go. That's a little bit more interesting. Hi, Sandy and Sue and Lori, Jackie, Michelle. Look, you're there on time. You are. Miss Terry's not going to be with us today because she is working at the shop for her Christmas sales. She'll be back after Thanksgiving. So this is what I've been doing. And I am having such a good time with this piece. Hey, Victoria, good evening to you. This um, could end up being another tall vessel like this one, because it started off the same thing. But it could also be a journal cover, uh, or I could just leave it as a wall hanging. I might just finish off the back and put it in the shop as that and let somebody else do it. I don't know. Hey, Joanne. It, I'll tell you what, it feels so yummy going across like this. Ugh. So I think I'm, um, I was debating. I didn't want to cover up all the little color in the background, but I do want to do some more stuff to it. When I get to the end, I will fold. It's, there's just enough room to fold this over, but I think I'll wait until I uh, am going to attach my background fabric to it. And then I'll just do a blanket stitch around. And I've been looking at one thing I feel like I did was, uh, well, two things I did that I wasn't paying attention to. <laughs> Hi, Hina. I picked this color of fiber to lay down in bad lighting and then stitched it down in bad lighting and then realized later it was really much more of a maroon than a purple. So when I pull purple to go next to it, like um, it, it's fine with this, but it, I don't really like it with that. So let's see, I should probably zoom you guys in a little bit more, huh? Let's see on this camera, we will just zoom down a little bit more. There we go. Hey, Lori. Hi, Margaret. Good morning. Oh, my goodness. What a wonderful full house we have. So, yeah, I'm not so crazy about the purple with it. And so I did this kind of a light green, which I really like, but it's so light that I feel like I need to do one more thing. So I think I'm going to take a thin thread and just not over all of it, but I'm going to add some little bits of green. Whoops, I should go where you can actually see me and my big old face isn't in the way just little bits of green. So picture some more little feather stitches coming off of there is what I'm thinking. Then I'm gonna add more knots in this wonderful thread. This was the one I couldn't identify and I figured it out. It is House of Embroidery and they have an absolutely marvelous collection of threads. You can get them at um, Sue Spargo dot com and also at global artisans and i've got a big order coming in so you'll be able to see all of that stuff up close but i'm going to make more little knots just kind of randomly around like that hey kathy how are you doing today and then i'm thinking to get more of this burgundy kind of color i'm going to add some knots with this and then i started doing down here at the bottom. I'm yakking all my head off right now. And then I promise then I will hear what you guys have got going on while I'm stitching. I use some really, really heavy thread to start doing some big knots here. And it's not nearly as much fun because of the thickness of the fabric, but I think I'm going to scatter some around because then we got to add beads, right? We got to add beads. And um, believe it or not, now I am in love with doing beads. I didn't used to be, but I am now in love with it. So I'm, I'm debating. I don't have a burgundy kind of bead. I ordered some, but I don't know how soon they'll be here. Maybe I'll just wait to finish. I don't think the brown, because there's no other really brown in there. So I don't think that really goes with them. And I think, I'm trying so hard not to spill them all over the place. 
It's a little darker. It might might pass for the burgundy, but I really don't think either one of those is going to go. I think I can use some of these because I think they would probably down here next to the down, down here next to the heavier knots. I can add some of these. They're just a really beautiful kind of um, creamy pearl. And then I can beef up my green. So it's just kind of a mix, but I'm thinking the really dark ones. You know, not lots, just kind of, you know, just, just some random ones. And then of course I want some sparkle because you know, things look better with sparkle. <laughs> So I think something like this. And if you remember me asking a while back about um, sizes of bugle beads, it turns out it was not bugle beads I was looking for. It was the uh, Delica, however you say those, um, the Japanese beads that are uh, perfectly cut and they are just a cylinder bead. And so in addition to bugle beads, I have those now. All right, and then, okay, on this one, Something I did, I didn't do any bullion knots on this. Can you believe it? I had just little bits of, I think this was sorry silk that I just kind of tacked down to kind of give some different textures. So I'm, I wasn't sure if I needed to do something like that in here at all. I may just stick with stitch and beads, but I could take some little bits like this. Hey, Fiona. Yeah, Delica's. Yeah, they um, it's wonderful. I love them. I now understand the sizes that I like that work with me, that don't make me crazy. Um, I learned so much about beads across the last few weeks. So I I don't know if it needs. To, see again, I feel like I'm clashing there. So if I get more light stuff, then I feel like it's too light. I don't know. So I think I might just not do anything else. Hey, Lori. Thank you. Oh, everybody, make sure you are in live chat and not top chat. I love this. I am I had so much fun doing this and I figured out so many things and I'm going to have a hard time. Do I want to, you know, I've been thinking it's going to be a vessel. This thing's going to be a vessel, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I just do it and just finish off the back and put it in the shop. I probably will not restock the shop until, okay, let's see, housekeeping. I am probably not going to restock the shop until mid to late January. Hi, Margaret. Happy to see you here. Um, in December, oh, and the shop is going to close uh, November 30th will be the last day I will ship anything out of the shop for this year. And then I'm, it's going to stay closed until mid January. December Zooms. Okay. If you are interested in seeing how much fun we have in the Zooms, and we have some people here that have been to one of the Zooms, December Zooms are going to be free. I will do them on a Tuesday and a Thursday, a morning and an afternoon one, um, just like our regular Zooms. But I want everybody to figure out, you know, how much fun they are and just see who shows up. And it just takes our community to another level. So if you want to make sure that you know about you know, what dates they're going to be. You need to sign up for the newsletter. And I think, there we go. Um, sign up for the newsletter because I'll send out an announcement there or I will put it in the Facebook group. So um, that, that would be the best way to know. I haven't picked the dates yet. I need to take a look at my other meetings I have coming up. But they are a lot of fun and they will continue to be um, paid ones in 2023 and they will continue to be you know pretty private in that I'm I don't post them on my website for sale I don't talk about them on social media except for after the fact and what did I do here uh let's see is that all the housekeeping <laughs> I feel like there was something else I needed to share with you guys but I do not remember what it was I do have a question for everybody though but I'm going to save it for the next lull in the conversation how's that uh, so tell me, who's doing what? Those of you in the U.S., are you um, doing anything special next week for Thanksgiving? I will be here next week. Uh, we are hosting Thanksgiving, but since my husband's the cook, my job is just to make the table look nice, which is pretty easy.
Thank you, Gail, for being here to do the links. I know you had some stuff going on earlier this week. I wasn't sure whether you were going to make it or not, so I was happy to see you here. If you have been to one of the Zooms before, um, let people know in the chat what you think. Yeah, he's he's an awesome cook, and he always likes to you know expand our um, menus into new areas. So I think when I heard the menu last night, it was um, some kind of a all I, I think it was New York Times. He'd found the recipe, and it was something like mayonnaise to base the turkey to make it moist. I don't know. Uh, I'll just show up and eat and a brandied pumpkin pie and mashed potatoes. And I don't remember what else. Next Thursday is Thanksgiving for us. Oh, Gail, I'm sorry you're in pain still. Thank you, Lori. Oh, yeah, I can already tell I'm going to like having just a little bit more of the green. It's like it doesn't need a lot. Oh my goodness, Victoria. We just got back from taking Taylor to our local college open evening. Scary leap, but he will be supported throughout his whole process if he chooses to go to that college. Oh my gosh. Is it one where he can specialize in cooking? What does he want to do more of? Hey, Patty. Hello. So happy to see you here. Let's see here. So what do you guys think? Should I leave the, just finish this off and let whoever gets it do what they want with it to make it a vessel or a journal or a wall hanging? Or should I make a commitment and make it something? Kathy says, my oldest will cook for Thanksgiving and second son will cook for Christmas. It was a great idea to teach them both to cook when they are young. Oh, that's wonderful. How nice. Malcolm is watching. Hey, Malcolm. Hi. <laughs> Boy, I wonder, I, I don't know that I would have been able to ever do YouTube if, um, when my kids were young. It was hard enough for me to write my books. Oh, he said no cooking. He doesn't want to do cooking. He wants to do digital creative media studies. Oh, interesting. So he likes doing a lot of things with graphics. Do you have him doing work for you on uh, graphical stuff? Michelle's working on a video for my YouTube all about mushrooms and how to use them in art. Clay. Oh, you're going to do spore prints. I love spore prints. Oh, flat lays. I'm a little mushroom crazy. So I use them all the different ways. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll put it in the shop, Sandy, but should it be finished as a vessel or just finish the back and as a flat piece? And then whoever gets it can decide what they want to do. That's kind of where I'm at right now. And I'm, I'm thinking that's maybe what I'm going to do. Lori says, attending Susan Zoom took me to a new level of community. It was great to match the faces with names I see each week, the studios, and some good laughs. Thank you. I would highly recommend. Thank you, Lori. Flat piece the person can use for their own art. That's kind of what I'm thinking. And that, um, that gives me a little bit more freedom to... Uh, Go forward on more pieces. I have my long hair is caught in the thread. Oh, dear. He loves gaming, wants to be a YouTube gamer streamer. No, he doesn't do any of your graphics, but he's awesome at digital artwork and physical pencil and paper. I remember he was quite the artist. Margaret said, um, I'm a bit mushroom crazy, too. I will watch your video. Yeah, make sure you post it in the group. Michelle, for all of you guys that follow me because you love nature, you really need to check out what Michelle's been doing lately because um, she's she's going places with all her nature stuff that gets me so excited. And, you know, I when I get the stuff in the garage organized, I will get back to that. It makes you collaborate in whatever they do with it. I love that idea. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Yeah, and then I can, you know, go forward and I can stop at a certain point and somebody else can take it uh, if they want to do something else. You know, maybe they want to add more to it.
you know, and I'm, th this was my, okay, you guys can laugh. <laughs> this was supposed to be my keep it simple. So I think I'm going to do one that's strictly um, couching. I have another piece of this same color and I think I'll just couch it with purple fibers and then stop there. I'm not brave enough to do the foraging. I'm glad you can identify all that stuff. All right, this is what I was a little bit wondering about is if because it's a variegated thread, you're not seeing enough of a difference. Let's see here. So even though, and of course I've got the autofocus off so you're not gonna be able to see. I started here and I really like the dark green. Let me turn the autofocus back on here. Uh, okay. So even though I started with the darker green here, the variegation changes to the light and I don't think it's going to, I don't think it's gonna do it for me. So another college is interested in out of town that offers exactly what he wants. They have a high tech equipment and teach them how to live screen. Ah, you might not qualify. Oh, I hope so. Yeah, Sandy, it's Susan Simple. So I think I'm going to take this out. I'm not gonna feel bad about it. Huge college set up a private one. Okay, that's that's good. Yeah, my grandson, um, he's studying. He wants to he wants to make video games, so he's doing that kind of college stuff now. Margaret says she's foraged for mushrooms in the past. Michelle said, my son loves to cook, but went to school for something else so he could keep that as his hobby and passion. It's wonderful to see what the kids love. Yep, absolutely. All right. Because I really like the, the, I wanted more green. I don't want any more beige. Mushroom dyes. Oh, Margaret says, I've foraged in the past. Recently, I've started foraging them for dyes. Um, Nick, uh, who, who's the guy? The organic artist? I think he's got some stuff about that in his book. Let's see. I'm glad that, that parents are encouraging their kids to follow their passion now because that wasn't something that was um, talked about as much when I was a kid. You know, so then we had to deal, deal with it later. <laughs> Many right in your own yard. Yeah, I've got ink caps, which I could probably use. But like I said, I'm not quite. Yeah, I'm just I got to decide. I can't do it all. Hey, Barbie, are you back from you were out on a boat again or something? <clears throat> That's what I remember. I had three Zooms yesterday. I think my vo voice was broken by the end of the day. So I need to remember to keep hydrated today. Yeah, I love the natural dyes, but the inks are easy. My thing is, um, you know, trying to like, I have a lot of dyed colored fabrics that I'm not sure what they're colored with. And I think I just need to put them in the shop as big bundles and sell them and then start over so I can kind of keep better track of things. Oh, Sandy says, I haven't crafted since July. I'm trying to get back in the groove. I don't know what I want to do though. Oh, Oh, that's hard to have that much time off. Yeah, Victoria says for anyone who's new and doesn't know about Taylor, he's 18 and has autism. So things like this are extremely daunting and not entirely straightforward. Yeah, college is going to be quite an experience for him. Quite an experience. Oh, Barbie's on a boat in the Caribbean saying hi, but geez, the lag is awful. <laughs> Michelle says, I agree, Susan. I just wanted to be an art teacher and an artist, and my parents were so negative about it. In the end, whoops, I always found some way to put out, put art in my job. Oh, that's good. Yeah, Lori, you can do that, but I don't want to make it any thicker because this is my base layer. I really wanted to do um, a thin layer on top.
But you're right, uh, Lori suggests putting two strands of the same variegated thread together gives it a little bit more interest. And because this, the, the variegated that I was using was an eight. So I'm just going to do two. Um, two strands of floss, of a green floss. Yeah, no sympathy, Barbie. That's, Lori says no sympathy. <laughs> yeah, Sue says, I didn't even know art was an option when I was considering higher education. Yep. Got an offer for $199 for five days. Hard to say no. Wow. So, okay, here's one of my questions for you guys. What is the worst art advice you've ever gotten? What is the worst art advice anybody ever gave you or that you saw on YouTube or something like that? Yeah, the only art classes that were really talked about was uh, photography for me. Um, anything with sewing was just considered home ec. Yeah, I agree, Michelle. Love that art is an option now for so many careers. Lori, yes, quite the compliment that um, Barbie would check in from the boat. I love that. All right, yeah, changing thread was great. Worst of art advice, you should quit doing that. It was about singing and I was 12. Oh, that's right. I remember that. You remember you talking about that? That just... And now, you know, singing just fills your heart with so much joy. I have been told to make certain things because they were sheer fire sellers. Oh, that's going to sell like crazy. Um, when I didn't even know what kind of an artist I was yet. So that, that wasn't really good advice. Fiona said, um, you'll never make anything that somebody wants. Oh, that's bad advice. Yeah. See, wait a minute. I wanted to. I meant to. I meant to star these. Barbie said, "I wanted to be a million things, but landed as an art teacher for years. My folks were not supportive. Oh, yuck! Yeah, you sing all the time and you love it, and it makes you happy, and that's the whole point of life, right?" Sue said, probably the worst I heard was not specific, but the general attitude that craft was not art or somehow less than fine art. Yeah. That red and green don't go together and neither do blue and green. Duh. Oh, my. Yeah. Heartbreaking advice. I agree, Michelle. Michelle said, um, used to think you had to do art, you had to be able to draw. You know what? I had that misconception, too. I didn't hardly tell anyone I was into art, so lucky you didn't get much advice. Sandy, you should not copy others. If I hadn't copied, I would have never gotten started. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Victoria, I know, isn't it wonderful? There's so much art out there that, that we can be trained in, whether it's in college or vocational schools. Yeah, Barbara, I agree. It's a terrible thing. Terrible thing to say to a kid or to anybody at any age. Kathy said that I shouldn't go to school to study art. I should go to trade school and be able to get a paying job. Yeah, I, I was told I should you know, go someplace where I could have a nice dependable um, job, you know, so you could count on benefits and things. Barbie Scholar Bola, you should do the art world a favor and become a business major, said to me my freshman year. Yikes. Michelle, you are so good, the voice of reason. Those negative things aren't advice, just people projecting their own insecurities and failure to think outside of the box. Yep. Michelle, my trouble was that the advice came from my parents. Yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, uh, the great masters copied all the time. That's how we learn. You know, the thing is, is you don't copy something exactly and then claim it as your own. I mean, where do we get our inspiration? I mean, that's what YouTube does for us, right? All this wonderful stuff we can, uh, we can watch and get inspired by. 
Victoria said, I was told to stick to work, wanting to work with kids as my artwork would fit well in with their mental ages. Ooh, ooh, that's harsh and horrible. Michelle said, in sewing class, I hated measured everything, but with mixed media, anything goes. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, you guys know me. I don't do good with the measuring. Or even just, <laughs> I did a bunch of uh, background fabrics, you know, and I was just attaching them to, you know, one thing to the other. I can't get these straight. You can see here, it's not a straight line. It's wider here than it is here. I just forget it. It's like, no, no, um, this is, this is me. <laughs> this is me. Michelle said, my mother now says how proud she is of me. She told me it was impractical and I couldn't be a success. And now she is my biggest cheerleader. She realized I was born to create for my happiness. Oh, what a marvelous gift. Oh, Margaret, I got that one too. I got that one too. I should stick with craft and make things that will be useful when I get married. Yeah, never did use my embroidered pillowcases. <laughs> You know, we need to um, we need to continue to be a part of communities like this where we can, you know, silence those horrible voices and support one another and, you know, help people, you know, get new voices in their head. Victoria said, I hated art textiles as I knew I wanted to work with computers all the way through school. I said I didn't care what career I had so long as I could sit at a computer, I'd be happy. Yeah, knowing what you want, big deal. But we weren't taught that that was okay when I was a kid. We weren't supposed to have those kind of expectations. Michelle said, I can't imagine saying those things to my kids. My son is going to school for game design, and you should hear the things other parents say to me. Oh, yeah, I know. People have given my grandson a bad time, too, because of you know he wants to go into game design. It's not a real job. Yeah, very sad to see how many people um, were told our dreams and passions were not viable. I'm glad we all didn't give up. Yep, 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 yep. So was there a turning point for anybody where they felt like suddenly art um, following their heart into the, the creative pursuits, whether it was art or music or um, cooking, you know, whatever their passion was, was there a turning point that you can think of, okay, I did this or somebody said this? I will say for me, uh, a lot of it has been the relationships that I have built on YouTube have helped my confidence really, um, really rise that it's okay to do the things that I do because even though they're not something like I can't go look up what it is that I do in a lot of cases and see somebody else that does it, but there are people that support it. So that makes me feel like, okay, you know, taking my own path is, is all right. I don't have to follow anybody else's path. Margaret said, I've never censored my kids' expectations. Whatever they want to do, I was happy for them to give it a go. Oh, you are awesome, Margaret, especially since I know what generation you are of, and that definitely makes a difference, I think. I wonder if it's a cultural thing. Do you find that that was true um, of other families in Australia? I do believe that you know some cultures better embrace uh, that sort of a, an attitude but I also think generations. Yeah, Victoria, they don't think it's a real job. And yet, <laughs> and yet. Barbara said, when I encountered the Earth Stewards Network in 1985 and they were singing Earth songs and goddess songs, I learned from them all and sang them and spread them around. They uplifted me. And that's, you know, if I can end my life saying that I uplifted somebody, while uplifting myself. I mean, what a gift. What an absolute gift. Barbie said, the professor that was such a jerk to me as a freshman was suitably impressed at my senior exhibit. Yeah, what a jerk. Uh, that's, that's a bad experience. I'm so sorry. 
Michelle said, my husband built me an art studio for our 20th anniversary. And when I lost my job in 2013, he said, why not do what you want and finally make art your job? His belief in me was everything. Yep, absolutely. That is, that's just fabulous. I'm, I, I'm lucky like that too, in that um, I could not ask for my husband to be more supportive of my ventures, whether it was when I was writing books or turning to art. Oh, Margaret. So you were just determined not to follow your parents' ways. That's fabulous. Laurie said, I was fortunate. My parents appreciated creativity, but I can see how many of that generation growing up during the depression considered money in their choice of professions. Yep. And security. My mom was very much about security. You know, is it something where you can depend on getting enough money to pay your rent or your mortgage every month and put food on the table? Oh, Gail said, my husband is also an artist, so I had no problem with support from him. Barbara said, Michelle, that brings tears to my eyes. Lucky you for being hitched to such a wonderful, to a wise man. Yes, indeedy. Patty said, my family had a lot of creatives, but it was considered a good side hustle. But you better have a good paying job since it was really just a hobby. I hate that word hobby so much. I really do hate that word. It is, uh, it ticks me off because it's sort of like, and I know we've had this discussion before about, you know, what's art and what's craft. Um, and I was reading some things about, uh, I guess it was an interview with an artist and about how she was asked to um, pick the winner in a juried art show and she got in trouble because she picked a piece of um, textile work it wasn't a quilt it was it was some other kind of you know like embroidery kind of work and they said no that wasn't art because the winning piece was going to be framed or going to be hung in the gallery and they said no no that can't be and so there's like a big kerfluffle about it and I guess that's happened again and again and it's just oh I hate the word hobby Michelle said my hubby thought it gave him a lifeline a lifetime pass on me ever being crabby or us fighting we giggle about that today I was on my best behavior for about a year Margaret said my mother was about security too but also about respectability so nothing outside the box oh yeah yeah, there's that, you know, um, especially I think some creatives are very outside the box and it, uh, you know, it scares people. If you're downloading something, can you turn it off? Okay, hopefully, hopefully this will bring it back. Michelle said, found the depression also brought out a lot of side hustles. Everyone in my family said things they made, but it always made them frame it as a side job. Yeah. Yeah. I'd love to see more textile work in galleries. Me too, Andrea. Me too. It uh, It's a respected art form. And I mean, you know, I think more so in um, Europe than here in the U.S., there are at least degrees that you can get in them. And you would think that would make them more respectable in the galleries, but that's not necessarily the case. People are weird. Patty said, way too many double standards. It's okay if you garden and run a roadside stand. That's a productive little hobby. But if you create and sell, you're in a pipe dream. Yeah. And then, you know, then it goes back to the self-esteem because why would you think that something that you, you know, you put together that anybody would pay money for? And I mean, that's an issue that a lot of artists have and, you know, asking for money for whatever they've created. But you're right. We don't worry if you're, you know, growing veggies and you're selling them in the corner stand. You don't worry about that. Galleries just want what they think will sell. They want what they think will sell. And people are willing to pay several thousand dollars for, you know, a painting. But they're not willing to pay 
um, say you had a, you know, a, a large piece of needlework, they're not willing to pay $500 for that. It was like, well, don't you have a print? Don't you have a print? And, you know, we all know how much longer it takes. I don't know why I did that there, but I guess we'll just go with it. Um, how much longer it takes to create needlework. Food is a necessity. Art is not considered a necessity. Yeah. And that's, I'll tell you what, that's a good rant right there. Um, because how many of us believe that art is what keeps us sane? Making art, cre the, the act of creating art is a necessity for so many of us. So many of us. I know if, if I'm sick and I can't create, it's almost like that makes me sicker. Michelle said, so interesting that two decades ago, it was hard to be an artist. And now with technology and the makers movement, everyone is an artist. I love how normalized it is. Yes, but it's still, I don't think, is respected as much as it should be. Um, Michelle, art is a necessity. Down with zucchinis. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, Angie, she's working on her mixed media knitting of Baja a boho cardigan and just finished knitting a ruana. My goodness, you are a busy gal. Barbara says, we have a lively fiber arts community here in Northern California. They put on a fiber arts show every year. It gets weavings, quilts, book arts, everything we're all loving these days. That's lovely. Yeah, sanity and going hungry are two different things. Yeah, but still, <laughs> still. I just... um. I don't know. I just think it's a necessity. And I hate that so many people are still carrying so much baggage that keeps them from, from doing the creative work that they want to do. Patty said, I always struggle with the difference between defining artist and crafter and creative. I personally prefer, prefer being in the creative category. Yeah. And I think this, that right there is a huge, um, a huge, struggle for a lot of us. And where do you guys want to be? You know, if you have to put a label on yourself, what do you want to be called? I want to be called creative, you know, art, being called an artist is nice, but I want to be called creative, uh, you know, crafter artist. Yeah. A lot of us stitchers are gardeners, both creative. Yep. Yep. You're right. Fiona. Lori said, I have to create every day for my sanity. I hear myself saying I need to go stitch. And as an artist, we need to value our work and sit at the price, set the price at a respectful amount so that others get it also. Yes. And people value more something that they've paid for. They really do. Whether it's a class or a piece of art they've bought. Barbara said, Patty, since I'm an amateur, I rigorously stay away from labels. I'm an artist, period. Michelle said, when I taught at the art center, there was a clear definition between the fine artist and the crafters. The art of craft has been internal to our culture. I read one definition where craft was supposed to be something that was going to be useful and art was going to be something that was observed, but not necessarily was not useful. So a beautifully embroidered jacket would not be art because it was useful. Margaret says, Nimbin has a gallery shop for local artists and they take what they think is good art of any genre, felting as many paint as much as painting, ceramics and mobiles, all sorts. They sell my journals. That's lovely. The only ones I know about around here, um, gallery wise, you really have to participate, you know, regularly in their meetings and work their shop and stuff. And I just, I don't have the energy for that. Plus, I don't want to go out. <laughs> Michelle said, I started off making earrings, then more art journaling, now more textile and slow stitch. With so much inspiration online, it's great to try new things. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of people that would say slow stitch is not art, and yet we have seen some actually amazing um, pieces of slow stitch that are absolutely art. All right, so I don't know if you guys can tell, but I think just adding a little bit of that dark. Yeah, you can't really see. Bring it up here. 
you can see just that little bit of green, I think, is just adding a nice layer. Yeah, I think, Victoria, you're right. I think um, artists seems to be taken more seriously as crafting is something people do when they're bored or working with kids. Sue so, said, so then there's a the distinction between fine art and decorative art, or there used to be. Yeah. Michelle said, Margaret, how validating that they've included your journals. Patty said, back in the day, skilled labor was craftsmen of one sort or another. Yeah, I need to take this autofocus off or somebody's going to get sick. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. Let's take that off. <clears throat> Decorative art tended to be things like toll painting, ceramics, embroidery, stuff that could be used but was made pretty to look at. Oh, that's a good definition of that, Sue. Margaret said the committee uh, gallery has a committee group, but otherwise you pay one third commission on whatever you sell. Yeah, art is in the eye of the beholder. I do think that still holds very well. I mean, you know, we can all go to the same museum and look at the same painting and some of us are going to go, you know, amazing. And some of us are going to go, I don't quite understand why that's art, but it doesn't make it any less art. Gallery commissions can be quite high. Yeah, I know one of my friends, um, she says she pays a 45% commission. And everyone will have their own interpretation. Yeah. I'm going to tie this off, so I'm just making a couple little French knots here. And the thing is, is when you create something, you know, you have to just do it for you. I mean, you guys know how I feel about that, and many of us feel about that. And you can't control somebody else's reaction to your art. I mean, maybe there'll be no reaction, but you, you can't control what somebody else thinks. And it's none of your business what somebody else thinks. None of your business, what somebody else thinks of your art. You know, your purpose was to create the art, to use your gift and create the art. And then everybody's going to go out and interpret it their own way. And it, it's out of your hands. I mean, once you put it out there to be seen, and I think it's important um, to a lot of us to be seen. It's validating. Okay, let's look at Fiona's definition. The difference between an artist and a crafter. Crafters usually take inspiration from others works. Artists innovate and have original concepts. That's interesting. Crafters usually take inspiration from others works and artists innovate and have original concepts. That's an interesting idea. Barbara said one of my local artist friends is a member of a local gallery and held a friend's show where every member invited a friend to come display their work. Helen invited me and I hung three quilts. Oh, wow. Wow. That is a great way to do a show. Yeah, Gail, I'm not so sure about that definition either because I think a lot of us are innovators. Michelle said, visit any art museum and you will see more than fine art. You will see craft in all forms, textile, wood, sculpture, mixed media. There's a reason it's all represented. Art is art. Yeah, I agree with you. Artistic crafter. I missed that. All right. Is it better if I do it this way? You can see the, you can see a little bit of the, the green that way. Yeah, everyone was an ungalleried galleried artist. I like that better. The the one and only um, gallery I've been in, uh, some of my mixed media was in like, I don't know, a dozen years ago. And it was not a good experience. Um, the, the talk that I, the presentation when we did like a Q&A afterwards was fabulous because, you know, it was all about creativity. Sue said, I like the term creator, creative as opposed to artist or crafter. Yeah, I, I like, um, Tim Holt said, uh, called it makers. And I like that too. Yeah, I'd love to see it. Would absolutely love to see your quilts that were in the show. 
I am not balancing well today. <laughs> Patty said, Sue Brown, me too. I feel less hemmed in and can try anything that strikes my fancy. Yeah, and I think we should all feel like we should do, be able to do that. To jump around to whatever interests us and not be, you know, stuck in one thing. Just because you primarily make one kind of art, you know, maybe you primarily make quilts, but you also like to make books and you like to do needlepoint and you like to do jelly printing. Joanne said, I equate art with youth. Sharing art with others keeps me in a forever learning mode. I want to learn and create for as long as I am living. Hence, I have a young at heart attitude. What a great way of looking at that, Joanne. That's fabulous. Barbie said, my degree in college was in art education, but my emphasis was in clay. But I kept messing labels up by making sculptural vessels and piercing them so I could stitch into them. It really troubled my advisor. Barbie, when you're home, we need to see some pictures of some of your other stuff. I just would love to see more of your work. Barbara said, I look at, wait a minute here, I got to. I look at photos like the one I'm going to post and think, golly, I've been dealing with back pain for so many years. Yeah, quilting's hard on you. Art can teach us about the history of a certain time, like the railroad quilt. Yes, yes. And we can be creative in the garden, in the kitchen, or with fabric, or and thread. Or That's what I love about my group. You guys, you are so wonderfully accepting of all modes of creativity. And, and that's it, because... Sometimes we bounce around, you know, I went to art when I was having writer's block with my, my books and then I would go back and forth between them. You know, they, one, one type of creative mode uses a different part of our brain and then feeds a creativity that's at rest. Michelle says, my mom always says I get my creative genes from my father, but she's an accomplished quilter. And to me, that is a huge artistic project, putting those colors and patterns together Total art, absolutely. I think what keeps us young is, you know, following our hearts, doing the things that make us joy. I mean, I, I know people that I swear, I think they get up in the morning and they're already thinking about what's for dinner and what time is it, it is to go to bed and they're only 40 years old. And it gets worse as they get older because they don't have a passion. You have to have a passion for something, even if your passion is not defined as my passion is stitching. My passion is gel plating. You know, your passion is, you know, like one of Patty's passions is finding all those good deals. She absolutely loves going to all the auctions and the flea markets and, you know, sourcing all these. The process of the find, the search is like this huge passion for her. And then it spills over into something else that she's going to create. If she's going to sit down and make some fabric things, if she's going to make some journal covers, if she's going to make some keychains, whatever she's going to make is going to spill over because she has that passion. You know, my passion right now is stitch, but I don't only stitch. And I'm already making plans for things I want to do with some jelly printing, whether it's on paper or fabric. But I have a passion and the passion is the gasoline that keeps us going. You know, the passion, if you don't feed it, you know, your tank gets empty. So you feed it with something and you got that passion and then it carries over into all this other stuff that you want to do. Barbara, yeah, but it's, you, that's just it. She says, I spend at least six creative hours at my desk every day, but I'm still sort of organizing dinner plans while I'm getting my lunch. Yeah, but you do the creative hours. I know people that that's literally all they do is they get up. They eat, they take a couple hours to go to the next thing. They do their laundry, they go for a walk. There's no, they're not fueled by passion. Gail said, my father's a creative in his own way. He wouldn't call it art, a craftsman more so. But he's 90 years old. And although a two-time cancer survivor, he's still an energizer bunny. Yeah, because I think it's the fuel. Lori says, going on the hunt is very inspiring for me too. Yes. How many of us go to Patty's sale looking for that, that next thing that we didn't even know that we needed? We go to a flea market. We go to a thrift shop. Yeah. Passion is the gasoline. I absolutely believe that. 
Margaret, I agree. She said, I see people who have no hobbies and passions and they are lifeless to my way of thinking. I absolutely agree with you. And I feel sad for them. You know, I feel, oh, make sure that the gopher guy's gone. Um, I feel sad if you have no passion because what, I don't know. There's, I have been depressed in, in the past, you know, 30 years ago, I was dealing with a lot of depression. Um, I was suicidal. I was really, really struggling. And I remember those days of getting up and thinking, why bother? You know, I might as well just go back to bed. There was, yeah, they were just zombies. It was just a zombie feeling to not feel like my passion was fueling me. And that was, you know, in the middle of my writing career after having a lot of sales. Um, and I started realizing I was kind of falling out of love with writing at that time, at least writing for pay. Whoops. You know, and I, I know too many people that, you know, they say, well, um, why, you know, you're 64 years old. Why are you working so hard? Uh, another friend of mine, um, she's 10 years older than I am and she's a painter and she, I don't know what I did here. So let's just undo it and rethread the needle. And she said, um, People are asking her all the time why she works so hard. Why does she work so hard at painting every day and working in the gallery and trying to sell her work? And yeah, I think if she stopped painting, if she stopped moving like that, she would just shrivel up. I don't know what I did here. My goodness. All right, let's go way back. Patty said, I needed to hear this. And now I need to find a way to repeat this to a few people in my life that need to hear it. Yeah. There are people, I think, that don't, yeah, they, they don't understand. They don't, um, if you told me to just sit all day and, you know, basically, you know, go for my, you know, my sit down at the dinner table, sit down for my breakfast and my coffee, and then just sit on the couch, sit in the sun, I, my days become so long. It's like I'm carrying this tremendous anchor on my back. Yeah, it's not work when you enjoy it so much. You guys are right. Oh, Lori, I know. She said, I hear people say how bored they are and don't know what to do with themselves. And I think there's not enough hours in the day for everything I want to do. I know I won't live long enough to do all the things that I want to do. And that's okay because I'm just going to play around with everything I love in the meantime. Michelle said, I also find that creative people think deeply, they feel deeply. I like relationships with people that talk about real things that go deep. I'm not interested in surface chat. That is so, so important. And I agree with you a thousand percent. I am the same way. I have a hard time. I, you know, I don't do small talk. Maybe it's one of the reasons I don't do well at parties and stuff because I don't do small talk. You know, if you tell me that you're an artist, I'm gonna wanna know. You know, what is your medium? What gets you excited to go into the studio in the morning? What is a piece that you're the most proud of? What do you struggle with? If you tell me you're a musician, I'm going to want to know what kind of music do you play? Do you write your own songs? Do you only do covers? How has your music evolved? Over? I want to know these things about the people I'm in conversations with. If you tell me you work at Home Depot, you tell me that you work at the garden store. I bet there's going to be stories you can tell me about that. But there are people, and it, it's not a matter of being an extrovert. I'm a super introvert. But if you ask me about something I'm passionate about, I can talk for hours. Trust me. Yeah, Gail said, I've heard people say that too about retirement. I'm always running out of time. Yep. How did I manage? To, okay. I'm liking this better with... I might even do one more layer. I might not do that. <clears throat> Patty says, what kills me is not enough time, but they aren't exactly doing anything. Like you got to actually start a thing to use up time. Yes. Yeah, just, you know, <clears throat> I don't have enough time to learn how to. Uh, okay, th this one also gets me. You know, it would take me forever to learn how to do what you're doing. I would say that most of the embroidery stitches that I use, I didn't know a year ago, two, a year and a half ago. I didn't know them. 
you've got to put in the time to learn whatever it is you want to learn. And in the learning, you discover this is my pro this is this process fascinates me or this process bores me. And then you go try something else. Yes, yeah, Sue says, part of the problem with getting older is it seems to take longer to accomplish what I want to do. The body doesn't cooperate like I want it to. Yeah, I hear that. I um, got really, the arthritis is really getting bad in these two fingers. And I'm thinking I need to pace myself. And then I need to take care of my body afterwards. Gail said, uh, that's true, Patty. What I meant was I'm always doing something and therefore running out of time in my day to get things done like housework. You're supposed to do housework? Nah, nah. Housework's overrated, right? <laughs> uh, since we're hosting Thanksgiving dinner, I guess there'd be a lot of cleaning happening this weekend. Yeah, so... <sighs> The passion is our gasoline. And I really think that, you know, sometimes there are people in our lives that come along and poke a hole in our gas tank, right? And they just drain all the gas away. And it used to really, um, it still pisses me off that it happens. But I've gotten much better now at saying, you know, um, that's okay. There's another gas station on the corner. I can get some more. I can go watch somebody that inspires me. I can go read about something that inspires me. I can go touch my materials because that inspires me. It's okay. You need my gasoline, take it. Patty said, Gail, um, I meant someone else like in my real life. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to pull this. That might be a little better. All right. Here's another question for you guys. If you could pick one word that describes or the, the one, one word that like when people think about, like right now, I think about Michelle, I think mushrooms. I think for me, my word is texture. What's your, what's your artsy, craftsy, creative word? Andrea said, I watch craft videos while I do housework on my tablet. That way I'm not missing valuable creative time. Yeah. Yep. Gail, I think you're not alone. I think many of us are not big housework people. Sue Brown's word is color. And I don't know, Michelle's probably got a different word, but I think of her and I think of mushrooms right now. Fiona's color. Patty is more. Patty, that is totally your word. That is so your word. <laughs> Michelle said, oh, you're going to go take care of your friend that just had surgery. I love having your input in our conversations. Happy to have you with us whenever we can get you, Michelle. Hope your friend is healing nicely. Sandy says, joy. Gail, the question is, what one word would describe you right now, you know, with your crafting thing? And mine is texture. A lot of people's are colors. Patty is more. Just, you know, I mean, maybe it's, uh, what other words might there be? There might be, it might be color. It might be fabric. It might be lace, texture. Victoria's is a corner rounder. I'm obsessed with rounding corners. <laughs> Joanne, bling. Yes, I would have totally seen that. Bling for you. Barbara's is Zentangles. I'm doing a second month of daily prompts. Oh, Lori, that's a good one. Layer. Barbie says, I feel like the clock is ticking, so I don't have time to pace myself. Yeah. Oh, Andrea, dimension. Dimension. Barbara, yeah, line. <laughs> oh, Margaret, I bet you can. One word. You can think about it. Lori's is ephemera. Yes. It's an interesting way to think about it. Um, the reason I asked that question is that um, I was talking with another artist friend a while back and we were talking about, you know, getting to those like 10,000 hours that people say, you know, you need to get to, to be an expert. And 
Margaret says, okay, everything. And uh, I said, well, I don't imagine that I will ever get to 10,000 hours in art. You know, I, I just, I don't know in any, because I like doing so many different things. I just couldn't imagine getting there. And she immediately looked at me and started laughing and said, but, but you do have 10,000 hours. If you narrow your, you know, narrow it down more into something that goes across all your disciplines, what is it that, that you're drawn most to? What is it that, you know, you get most excited about? And her, for her, my friend, um, it was color. And I thought, oh, for me, yeah, it's absolutely texture. I hate to start thinking about how much time I have left. That like freaks me out. That can actually stop me in my tracks if I think about that. Yeah, nobody's counting. But, you know, it was just an interesting conversation that we were having about what, you know, they, the, you know, ephemeral they say you need to, to get to in order to be an expert in something. And I don't want the label expert. If you're going to stick a label on me that isn't like artist or creative, I want to be the person that you think about, you know, when they say, well, I'm not feeling very creative today. Who should I go watch? I want them to think about me. I want people to think about, you know, more than just the art I make. I want them to think about the words that I of support, hopefully that I offer and that help people realize that they can be brave creatives. Kathy's is multifaceted. That there you go, Margaret. There's that covers your everything. Multifaceted. <laughs> Victoria's collage, yeah. Patty says ten thousand hours. So I'm a master mom. I've clearly mastered talking. Yeah, it's it's just it's a weird way to think about it. You know, the, think about the apprenticeships that people put in. You know, in the past. Yeah. And, and if we look back at where we were, I mean, when just if those of you that have YouTube channels, if you go back and you look at, you know, your first videos and you see how far you've come with that, it's kind of amazing to me to look back and say, wow, you know, this is what I used to be doing and look at what I'm doing now. Kathy said, I just had another birthday last week and someone asked me how old I am. I told them I quit counting years ago. Yeah, sometimes I have to hesitate and go, um, I think this. Sue said, we need supporters and encouragers in our lives. Yes, we do. And I hope that I do that for you guys. And I love that you guys do that for each other. Victoria said, I remember being so daunted by collaging as I was way too fussy and OCD with what went where, but I learned to let go and go with the flow. And it's my most favorite thing to do. I find it relaxing. Yep. Patty said, Sue Brown, Joanne is your girl. Best support you'll ever find. Isn't she amazing? And the words that she comes up with are so articulate that I just... Um, yeah, she, she makes me teary. So Joanne's an awesome supporter. You got that right. Oh, Barbie, I was just asking if you could pick a word to kind of describe where your passion is right now with your, your creative self. What would it be? Margaret said, so I guess mine is books, paper. Yeah. Oh, there will be much throat tea for me this afternoon. So I will have a new video coming out tomorrow about planning some ideas of planning a project. They might be helpful to some of you. Um, anybody that came in later, I will remind you that December Zooms are going to be free. And so just make sure you're in the Facebook group or you sign up for the newsletter so you know what's going on. Barbara said, at the beginning of my art journaling, I was so deliberate and careful. I wasn't having so much fun. Then I did Shannon Green's journaling by fives and look out world. Here I come. Oh, Joanne, you shouldn't be. Um, Patty speaks the truth. Lori said, after working 43 years in healthcare, I constantly felt like my creative time was running out. It really kicked my anxiety into high gear. Retirement is one of the best things I ever did for myself. Yeah, and you have really been creating like crazy since then. Um, yeah, that feeling of 
of not having enough time to create all the, the things that are floating around in our heads you know, and then all the materials, because come on, we're, we're all hoarders of a sort, right? With our, our creative materials. And let me just say right now, use your stuff. I, I fell in love with this thread when I started making these knots, because it was just this wonderfully variegated thread that just gave me a garden of colors, which are not really shown up as well on here. Um, and I almost didn't use it because it, I couldn't remember what kind of thread it was. And I thought, oh, I'm going to use it all up. Well, yeah, that's the whole point. Use your stuff. Use your bling. Use your best threads. Use your fancy material. Journaling by fives. Oh, maybe, um, Barbara, if you feel up to it, you can post uh, one of Shannon's videos in the group so that people can know about it. It was something Shannon Green did years ago and really jump started a lot of, you know, um, a lot of creatives. Barbara says, yes, let's hear it for retirement. I've been playing every day of mine since July of 2013. Lori says it's like opening the floodgates. Yeah. When I got, um, Finally, I would say laid off, you know, that we, my company had been sold so many times, corporate company, and I knew that I was going to be able to be home full time. It definitely opened up the floodgates. Well, there were there was a few months of, oh, my, this is quite different than I was thinking it was going to be, but it got better. Yeah, it's a great process for just unblocking things. And even if you don't do it, you know, consistently, you just it'll it might be like a little jump start. Thanks, Barbara. I appreciate you doing that. You know, um, you don't have to just share your own videos in the group. If you've seen something that somebody has done or, or seen a talk that somebody thinks is awesome, you know, please share it in the group because we don't all see the same things on our home pages. So we might not know about it or it might be something that we saw a whole lot of years ago that somebody else hasn't seen yet. So we'd love it if you would share that kind of stuff. Gail said, when I was first retired, there was a period where I was actually overwhelmed. I did run around and didn't get much done, but I've settled down now. Yeah. No, I, Sue, I was sure it was painter's thread, but it's actually house of embroidery. I was able to find it last night and I ordered, um, <clears throat> I ordered a lot more thread, not just this color. <laughs> um, the it's global artisans in Las Vegas and Sue Spargo dot com carry house of embroidery threads i was sure it was painters threads because i have some painters threads but it was not okay there's shannon's video there we go Yeah, I kind of went, um, it is a dangerous thing, Sue. It is a very dangerous. Luckily, they did not have, it wasn't like going to Sue Spargo. Um, I went to a, a global artist, because I already had a Sue Spargo order coming. And I was like, well, I don't want to place another one there right away. And then I found global artisans, which I loved because the pictures were much bigger. And um, yeah, they are beautiful. Also, you know, highly um Merch merchandise, however you say that word, and just beautiful threads. All right, where else do we need some green? Let's come up here. Hi, Vicki. Welcome. So happy to have you join us. She said, I just turned this video on and I'm off of this beautiful piece. Thank you so much. This is piece of my dyed fabric. Oh, let me grab it for you, Sue. Um, Cause I was just there. And the nice thing about this plate, I mean, the prices were very reasonable. If you buy a uh, $35 worth, the shipping was free. And when you look at the house of embroidery threads, um, Tell me you don't drool because I was certainly drooling last night. The color that um, that I found was Helabor. 
Vicky, what kind of um, arts and crafting do you enjoy doing? Are you a stitcher? Do you, are you, a lot of us here do a lot of different things and we love to have new people join us. I'm here every Wednesday and most of the time I'm stitching. Stitching something. Well, I love the effect of floss, but dang, I just really, I do this way too many times. Get it? I probably cut my thread too long. Sewing and hand embroidery. Well, I'm, um, I'm kind of obsessed. This, this is another one of my pieces. If you are new to my channel, there is a lot of different stitching in there and, uh, Gail, if you have the Facebook group link handy, could you please post it again? If you're on Facebook, we would love to have you join us. Yeah, isn't it? Serious hand, serious trouble, Sue. I know, I know. I placed a big order. I'm going to do some video. There'll be some thread videos coming up because um, I couldn't resist. Thank you, Gail. I, you know, I should wax it. I should do a little bit of wax, just a very light, just a one time through, and it would probably be a whole lot easier for this. Okay, and I don't worry. <laughs> you guys know me. I don't worry if my my feather stitching is not even. It's it's not my priority. My priority is right now is the colors and the texture. Thank you so much. You are on YouTube and you're a subscriber. Okay. And there's the link to the Facebook group for anybody that's not joined us. That's where I will be posting the dates for the December free Zooms, which have been so much fun. Um, we had a good one yesterday. So I've, I've been thinking about, there'll be a new video going out tomorrow and been thinking about doing some different things on the channel. I've got um, the stuff planned to do the stitching tutorials. Highness says, I was always interested in embroidery, stitching, et cetera. Regret that I didn't do it sooner. I just didn't know how to turn it into a career or what to do with it. Yeah, you know, I think there's a lot of us too that, you know, I don't know about you, but for me, I had a lot of um, emotional baggage that I was carrying from, you know, home ec classes and from people that were teaching me embroidery and not encouraging. And the only thing I was told to do with it was, you know, you need to put something together to put in your hope chest. Uh, and I never used any of the things that were in my hope chest. Ah, Barbara posted one of her own videos of uh, journal flips that she made with the journaling by five stuff. That's great. Thank you. It's a it's a wonderful block breaker, that's for sure. Now, I think that the thing with embroidery as an art um, career is very difficult because the amount of hours that we put into it and most people, most people look at it and they say, well, it's a needle and thread, you know, it, it's not that hard. It shouldn't take that long. And of course we know that those of us that do it, how terribly long it takes. What is a hope chest? Um, when I was a teenager, the idea was that you would make things like embroidered pillowcases and tablecloths and, quilts and things that would go with you when you were married. So you wouldn't use them until um, you were married and they would be like to start your new life together. Andrew's in the UK. Do they call it something else in the UK? I think we had this discussion before. Fiona, if you're still here, do you remember we had a discussion before and there was something like that? <coughs> and I remember I also bought like certain things like I would have, yeah, hope to be married. That's it, Sandy, hope to be married chest. You know, I bought some dishes, not like fancy dishes, but I bought some things um, to put in there. Yeah, if it's not popular in the UK, maybe it's a US thing. No home ec in the UK, but you guys have other, you guys have, 
guilds and other things. That was it, the bottom drawer. I remember we had this discussion before. Margaret said in the UK, we always called it the bottom drawer. Trousseau, yes, that's it. Oh, and in Scotland, it was called a kist. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, Trousseau, I'd totally forgotten about that. So those of you in the UK, where did you, yeah, take off on a dowry. Where did you learn your basic sewing and cooking skills? Because here in the US, that was home ec classes. Barbara said, while I'm posting, I'll post the same six Wednesday video get this published, gets published today at 5 p.m. It's another neat little challenge that um, Barbara does with her friend. Victoria said, home economics here in the UK when I was in school in the 90s was cookery and textiles, was literally that artwork, playing with textiles, sewing, et cetera. Oh, interesting. But Andrea, you say <clears throat> they didn't call it home ec for you? It's always you get, man, what did I do that? To? There we go. I've always been jealous of all the um, high level, you know, textile classes that you had available in the UK because we don't see nearly as many of those um, in the US. Barbara said it's a hop, so you can hop from one to the next of six artists using the same stuff to make something. Yeah, started by YouTube artist Tanya McGuire. Food and sewing, those were two home ec classes in my day. Yeah, that's all we had. Oh, domestic science. Ah. It makes it sound so official. Yeah, it sounds better, doesn't it? it sounds smarter. <laughs> Isn't it funny what you call – well, it's just the same thing with, with craft, art, creative. Um, what we call something or someone – really can can change how we think about it. Sue said, but you wouldn't have enjoyed the precision expected by the RSN. So what's RSN tutors? Oh, nice one. Angie said, my word is dramatic. I love drama in my work. I would totally agree that that is you. She said, I think art is something you create that wasn't in the world before. I like that. I like that. Lori said, we had whole mac and cheese, which, appar which apparently the girls aren't allowed to take. But my mom and dad supported me and my friend Monica, the first girls to take wood shop in our school day. Oh, wow. I took, um, I took a mechanics class. Margaret said, I learned sewing from my mother, cooking I just picked up as I went along. We did not, we did have domestic science for one term, that's all. Fiona said, my embroidery from a neighbor when I was a child, machine sewing at home, mom made our clothes, cooking from several cookery books as my mother was terrible. Highness says, we have a textiles class in high school, though, and art is separate. We have something called design technology, and it involves cooking textiles, woodwork, et cetera, changing between them each term. Oh, that sounds nice. Oh, Royal School of Needlework. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wouldn't that be amazing? And art itself is a weekly thing. I can see what I forgot to do today. Margaret said we made an apron, a pair of socks, a sponge cake, and a stew. Not much else. Yeah. Yeah, serious stuff there. <clears throat> Andrea said, Sue Brown, have you studied at RSN? 
Cookery was home ec and that's all it covered. Art was broken up into art textiles, but we covered both. Oh, Victoria, well, it sounds like it's a nice. Sandy said, I would sit under the quilt frame when mama went to the ladies art society meetings, look like stained glass. Oh, wow. Sue said, no, but I've always envied the respectability RSN certification earns. That You know, and that's, I totally get that, Sue. Um, there's something about getting a certificate from a respected organization like that, that that makes you feel more. And isn't it sad that we want that certification to do that for us? It's really sad. Oh, Margaret said, we also learned how to properly scrub a wooden table. <laughs> Yeah, they've, they've been crazy. Um, I forgot to do something on the, the setup here. I forgot to set it up for subscribers only. Lori says, I know I always say this, but it's true. What a fantastic group that says thank you for sharing, everyone. Absolutely. It is a great group. Barbara said, California just voted for something to bring art back into the schools. I know. Isn't that exciting? Isn't that exciting? More art, more music. In Home Ec for me, we made an apron um, and we learned to make um, biscuits. And I think we were supposed to do something with gravy maybe. I don't know. I was not good at it. Was not good at it. Yeah, the, the RSN stuff is, is such precision that I know um, I would have it would have been a big fat fail for me. Yeah, Gail, I think we I think we did. We had similar classes and you know the mechanic class that I took. Um, there weren't a whole lot of girls in that one. Baking powder biscuits. That was it. Thank you, Lori. Baking powder biscuits. I was going to say buttermilk, but it wasn't that. It was the baking powder biscuits. Barbie said, if I'm brutally honest, my word would be stalled or frozen or non-existent. Aw. Bye-bye, Sandy. I'll talk to you later. I need, um, I need to hear about how yesterday went, so send me a text, okay? <laughs> Sue said, I enjoyed my woodworking class a lot more than the homework classes I had to take, yeah. I wasn't allowed in the woodworking class. Um, I think, I don't remember how I managed to get into the mechanics one. I think because I just had so, I just needed to, they needed something, someplace to put me because I already had enough credits to graduate but they needed to keep me there because I wasn't old enough because um, I just kept taking all these extra classes. Yeah. And so it was like, well, I needed another, you know, elective. And I said, well, that's something I'd like to take. And it was like, well, okay, it's not going to affect her grade because they figured I was going to flunk. And I didn't. Oh, that's a good word. Michelle challenge. They had to let you, um, in because you'd already done home ec and couldn't cope with the choir music. Oh, yeah, I didn't like the music classes. That wasn't me either. Yeah, I I love school. So I was one of those people that always took, you know, the extra. Um, oh, I would have loved to take metal work. We weren't allowed to do that either. <clears throat> I took the the early morning classes, the two. I'd always go like two classes early. And then two classes later, and just because I love school, and there was until I got into the horses and skating, there wasn't a whole lot of anything else to do. Okay, I had another thread here. Let's just use up this one that I had to cut off. Hello, Canadian artisan. Is that that's Carol? Welcome. I'm I'm only here for a few more minutes, but happy to have you join us. Oh, Canadian art artisan is Carol. Thank you. Appreciate that. And I think metalwork is just fascinating. 
All right. I, I really wish you guys could see the difference. In the colors there. I really like it. All right, let's take over to I'm just gonna add more knots. Yeah, we would love to have you join us sooner next time. I'm sorry, I hopefully I haven't been like completely out of frame the whole thing. Oh, you had to get some things done. <laughs> well, you are here now and we are happy to have you. So I'm sure I'm not the only person that likes to, when they're doing knots or actually most of my embroidery, you can see the difference. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. It's just, just that little bit of something. And then I think, I really think taking some of the darker beads, like the dark, you know, the green beads, and I might do the big ones down at the bottom. And then I've got some little green beads that should be here in a few days that I'll do up at the top. Yeah, and I'm glad you guys all agree that I'll just, um, I'll put a backing on it and leave it as a flat piece. Maybe I won't even put a backing on it. I don't know, should I put a backing? I think I should put a backing on it before I sell it, but I don't have to. Ah, Victoria's dad was a scrap metal man when I was younger. He had his own scrap yard, and I used to love going with him at the weekend and playing along with everything. Um, what size is this piece? This is about 9 by 12. Yeah, about 9 by 12, because the base of it is a piece of felt. Yeah, because that's why I was thinking, Margaret, it, it would work well if I decided to do a vessel you know, let's see, let me pull you, let me, it's a good way to end is, I, oh, thank you, Gail. Let me reset this. All right, now you can see the whole thing. So, and get my camera straightened out. There we go. So this was started by just grabbing my fibers first and just, dropped it down. Kathy said, I uh, graduated in 72. There were boys classes and girls classes and we weren't allowed to take boys classes. My senior year, I took an extra art and gym classes to fill my schedule. Yep. I graduated in 76. So the thought was if it was, if it was a vessel, then things were flowing up and down. If it was folded in half for a journal cover, it would be, it'd be a lovely journal cover and it feels so good. Oh, magical touch. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sorry, Carol. I, I know who you are now. Um, it just makes it, it's a very nice size and it's a good size for working on my lap. That's what I like. It's a good size for working on my lap. So what do you think? When I'm done with it, I think to finish it off, I need to cover the back and then I'll put it in the shop flat. That's what I'm thinking. All right, people. Um, Next week, I will be here. It's the day before Thanksgiving here in the States, but I will be here. Oh, they don't let you change the old name yet? Oh, interesting. It'll make a nice journal cover. It'll feel really good, although I think it would also, you know, it would do good like this too. But I'm not going to worry about that because I would rather make multiples of these and let somebody else take it from there. Yeah, the feather stitching reminds me of seaweed too. And I, I might have done the, uh, you know, you can always, you can look at something or you think you should offer it raw or covered. Okay, well, that's, those are the two choices, raw or covered. <laughs> oh, I could offer it raw or covered either way. Gotcha. Um, what was I going to say? You can always look at a piece at this, you know, at, at whatever stage and say, oh, I could have done this. I should have done that. Oh, this should have been differently. And I'm trying really hard not to second guess myself anymore. And I hope you do the same thing because, you know, life is too short to feel frustrated about not doing something the way we wanted to on our work because, you know, finish it and then go off and do something else. I mean, I'm, I'm looking at this piece of fabric and I'm thinking, you know, 
it's it could be just a long snippet roll. It could be cut up into things to make a concertina. It could be um, a scroll. It could be all, you know, so yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda, exactly. For a journal cover, you wouldn't need the backing on it. That wouldn't be a problem to have it. Well, you know, you would be doing, yeah, your backing to cover the thread. That's kind of why I like to do a backing, Sue, is to protect the threads. Then I'm, I don't feel the need because I sometimes forget and I make really bulky knots. So um, I tend to like to take a thin piece of fabric, just a neutral color to put on the back. And I just take some um, heat and bond and that gives a nice uh, weight to it. So this is the same kind of thing and it's it's weighty enough to hold up as a vessel or as a nice cover and then it would hang nicely on the wall. Looks like you're looking through the water. Yeah, I've got some more of this fabric in different sizes, so I'm going to keep playing with it. OK, people, I'm going to go make some tea before my next meeting at two o'clock. Thanks for hanging with me. Yeah, sell it flat and let the buyer turn it into whatever they want. I'm liking that idea a lot because then I can keep going on some of the other ones I've got happening. This is just my, this is my TV projects. All right, people, I will see you in the group. I'm going to be putting up a poll over there a little bit later. Did I put a bottom on the vessel? You're right. I did. I put a bottom on the vessel. Just cut a little circle and did a blanket stitch around it. Thanks for all your help on the links, Gail. Great to see everybody. If you didn't already leave a thumbs up, please do. And if you could leave a comment after the video um, is up on YouTube, that really does help YouTube know they like me. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.